Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, don't shun me for speaking English. Uh, my Arabic, Mu'annas al muzakkar is one. I know half of you will not agree, so I'll stick to English. And uh, I wanted to start the slide off with, uh, the presentation off with this slide. Can we see the presentation? Screen? Thank you, yes. All the talk that I've seen over the day and a half has gotten me thinking and I had to switch everything around. I come from a, a country and a company that deals in entrepreneurship at all levels. And I decided instead of sharing all the initiatives with you, I wanted to share my concerns with you and see if there are any initiatives that you can tell us to do in Saudi that we can take home. Because I'm a parent of teenagers, youth, generation, and I, I have these concerns. I wanted all of you to see the other side, what we're dealing with. William was a kid I saw presenting at a TED conference about six years back. He was at the time older, but he had done this windmill at about 14 years of age in a Malawi village in Africa. Some of you might know William because he's now well written off and talked about in MIT and so forth. What this kid did, who was a school dropout from the age of nine, was get a hold of a book that was on simple windmills and decided that he had to build his own windmill at four times his physical height to deliver electricity for his whole entire village so that people in his village might enjoy doing things at night, listening to the radio, and might even have their own radio station one day. William succeeded. I went home in shock, saying, my sons are that age. What are they doing? And, oh hell, you know, I spent close to half a million dollars on their education and all the gizmos and gadgets and yeah. everything. And I went home and my kids were on this Call of Duty game, which they were using the internet for, which they were killing people in, I don't know which part of the world. And they had people <coughs> from, I don't know what part of the world with them doing it. And I was like, hold on, no, 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 mom, we're packing the bags, I'm taking you on an all this trip to Boston City. Harvard's and MIT's, if you see the places where people discover innovation, like Silicon Valley and Boston, you may be enticed to do so. I spent another quarter million, no effect. My sons decided to take the career path and do nothing. Unfortunately, I roused myself as a very, very bad parent. I have two young girls, so I have hope yet. But then I went back to Stanford School of Design. I said, you people design everything in the world. Can you tell me what is wrong with my design? All right, I'm a parent. I'm doing something wrong. So I said, look, it's not you. It's the human body is actually programmed for this. That's what you're programmed for. All right, your brain, your instincts, your innovative intuitions, and everything in your body is programmed for this, from your birth till your death. So this is what should make you happy. Having only the right amount of food and water and clothing and shelter, and having a community around you that cares for you, nurtures you, and raises you. That's what the human body and brain needs. What do we give our kids? This, hurrah, million stimulus per microsecond, million stimulus per microsecond. Google it. I'm sure you've got scientists in your, uh, you know, in your backgrounds. I may be absolutely wrong, but the scent of the person that's walking from beside you is a stimulus your brain needs to adapt to before it can actually function well in an environment where it can innovate. And this is how our teenagers look globally. I'm sorry if their faces are looking like this. Mine look exactly the same. I just didn't want to embarrass them putting them up there. And they all fail alone. Yes, we live in numbers, huge numbers, but we are not working together. Our youth are not feeling us working together. Now, here is the thing that teenagers do. They mirror the behaviors they see. In the African, Malawi, the where William comes from, they have a saying, Ubuntu. Ubuntu, if you know the language, basically means you become a person through another person. So I asked myself, who was I exposing my kids to? Who was the other people in their life? Because they didn't see much of their mom. I work 18 hours, hell, sometimes 24 seven. So who was I leaving my kids to? But before then, I needed to understand something. 
I went to a friend called Dr. Janet Crawford. You may know her. She runs an institute called Cascadence, and she told me, you want to fix what you've done wrong? Cure their prefrontal cortex. That's where entrepreneurship, One innovation, day. and everything happens in the brain that really matters for youth to become active, vibrant contributors of the society. I said, so what do I have to do? do do the schools do this? Do the teachers know this? Do the Minister of Higher Education and Education know this? They were like, oh, forget them. This is absolutely what you need to do. Now look at the first four. It seems easy. Sleep, diet, exercise, sunlight. Right? Every kid in Saudi has sunlight. That's where I come from. Sleep and exercise. We live next to a gym. My son pumps up his muscles all the time. And sleep, hell yes, they sleep. And diet, I'm assuming I give them decent enough. But the last three is what I'm not able to deliver. Social connection, meditation, altruism. It's interesting, human body and brain is programmed to pray in silence, in alone, in a meditative state. It's designed to give good to those that are not you, altruistic feelings, and social connection. Are we feeding these? So I looked at what I was feeding my kids. First of all, sleep. That's my son in an exam, probably, because he does fall to sleep just before his exam night. Our schools don't allow our kids to sleep, whereas elsewhere in the world, it's a part of the routine program. Okay? They actually take care of that. Exercise. There isn't one school in my town that allows girls to do this. I'm glad if other Arab countries are enjoying it. I've seen the girls in the Olympiads, and I'm so happy. But in mine, it's not allowed, so we have to advocate for that. The question I had was, again, who am I exposing them to? Who are they mirroring? Who are they actually seeing? And then I came across a series my sons were watching on teenage girls in high school, together with their eight-year-old sister when I wasn't home. Arab Idol. Arab, I, I love those guys. And the news, of course. If you were to be serious and watch the news, that's probably you guys have made on Tahrir out there. But here's the, the stunning founding. More than half of the population of children that watch TV think celebrities are cool and they have to become like them. And you know that too. So this is what we're mirroring in our Arab world for our kids. This is what they're actually watching all the time. And when we want youth to excel and innovate, are we showing them that? Are we mirroring that in our youth? I told my son, stick to computers. No harm could be coming from computers. Please just turn off TV, stick to computers. Then, then, Arab gaming community. That's a radio on the internet where the guy speaks words in Arabic that are triple R rated, okay? Talking about the games. And he's their age. And I couldn't stop my son listening to it because he's ad addicted to it because he has to contribute by sending all sorts of SMSs. Bad parent, super bad parent. Just FYI, both my sons are at the top of their class. One graduated, he's in medical school and a top honor student. But still, I'm a very bad parent. And then I said, okay, social network. Great. Stop playing games. Go do the right thing. Go to the right YouTube and, and Facebook. And I found out they were being harassed. Now, this is... This is from a study that was done by a peer review group in the United States. And it tells you that our kids get bullied every time they interact on the internet, one out of four times, and 60% of those kids don't come back and tell us that they were bullied. Because guess what? Saying nasty things on the internet to someone you don't actually physically see is a lot easier. So they're not even happy being on the internet, just FYI. And we do have the highest rating of YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, and I don't know what contributors in the Middle East, so we're not raising. And this is what they get looked at. Lots of rude statements, lots of mean statements. Yes, funny is out there too, but what type of funny? So I looked at my voice. I said, all right, here is one that's constantly doing the same things the same way. He is mildly autistic and another one who wants to do things differently every other time, and I think he's on the psychopath patterns. And when I saw Janet again in uh, Stanford, I asked her, what am I missing? What am I missing? And that was about two weeks ago. And she said, simply, mildly autistic 
This is what we hire for the School of Design. Those are your best engineers. Go look out for where your kid can hang out if he's mildly autistic. My son is not autistic, but he's focused. But still, I would love him to hang out with people that are focused on doing the right things. And the psychopath, she said, cherish them. Steve Jobs was one. Ask anyone that worked with him. He's going to be the entrepreneur of the future. And I wanted my sons to do normal things. Again, I looked around for them to mix in clusters. I wanted them to learn how to eat healthy. A cooking club for youth. Couldn't find one. I wanted them to find this, a place where they can co-ed play games. Communication, ladies and gentlemen, is the most important tool we have to teach our youth. If they don't know how to talk to each other, then they talk about each other behind each other's back. They don't communicate, they don't coordinate, they don't correlate. So in my environment where we segregate, the divorce rate in Jeddah is 48% on the first year of marriage. They can't discover how to talk to each other on the first night of marriage. Okay, just a fact. <coughs> So I looked for any of these, anything, Boy Scouts. I am sure I'm in the presence of lucky people who are from Arab countries that have Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts in their countries. We don't, okay? Not speaking about Saudi right now. In my part of the world, which is three countries, we don't in all three of them. And we don't have any maker camps. We don't have any teen hangouts. We don't even have summer camps. Summer is the most informative time we can share with our kids and we don't have that. And I'm wrapping up, Mirak, I know uh, my time is limited. And we have a lot of these. These are synopses of instances where we cherish techies and geeks and geek fests. But again, they're not on that value chain of diet, exercise, sleep, sunlight, meditation, and altruism and the ability to connect and communicate their emotions. None of them are. So good to know all our governments want knowledge-based economies, all of them. Every single Arab nation has communicated to their strategists, please go and build a knowledge-based economy. How will you build a knowledge-based economy without innovation, without integration, and without communication beats me? Maybe you know the answer to that. Our youth need more substantial, a lot more basic input. And they look at this and they say, we're going to take international policies, we're going to cook them up to become national policies and the local policies, and we're going to connect these local ecosystems. But what I want to leave you with is this, a simple blank page. And rethink. Please do rethink. It's as simple as diet, exercise, sleep, and sunlight to feed the prefrontal cortex of our teens. And if we are able to build our school curriculums, our parenthood, our integration with the youth that are our neighbor's children and our people and our families, around the feeding of the prefrontal cortex, I'm sure we're going to have youth that can innovate, become entrepreneurial, and do much more. Thank you very much.